Hello YouTubers, welcome to my today's video, CyberArk 12.0 series. I'm gonna start to install CyberArk 12.0 PAS Privileged Access Security Solution, including Vault, including CPM, including PVWA, PSM, and maybe disaster recovery. Let's start it with CyberArk Vault installation. First thing, of course, you want to check out the documentation for how to installation. There's some consideration you need to think about the where you're gonna install your CyberArk Vault. Outside firewall, inside firewall, in the DMZ or through a proxy server. You may also want to look at the installation requirement. You need to have a mass CD, operator CD, license file, and the installation CD or installation files. Before the installation, you may want to check the server requirement. There's a digital server requirement. If you are using 2012, then uh, there's a requirement for the Windows update. KB2919335 or the .NET Framework 4.8. Actually, this KB is wrong. It is 355, not 335, as is show here. So there's a typo on the documentation here. So remember that it's 355, not 335. The .NET Framework 4.8. That's a requirement for 2012. 2016, you already have those, so. You need to think about the vault location, other NTP licensing, and the vault keys, those are operator CD, master CD. After you reviewed all those documentation, then you can start it to do the installation. You can see there's a normal installation process listed. It's very straightforward, same as you did before. So let's, uh, let's look at uh, our virtual machines here. I created one which is 2016 OS. I just gave two gig RAM two CPU, two virtual CPUs. It's on a work group, not in a domain. 2016 standard version. I already copied keys, installation CD files, all those kind of stuff uh, here. So there's a server and the client. I already unzipped it. So let's start to do installation. Uh, right click setup file, run as administrator. The installation steps is very standard steps as you did on previous version. Um, you can skip it if you already done that before, but this video is gonna show you the whole process. Since we are installed over the RTP session, so there's some warning message here to let you know. So basically, um, you need to allow RTP port to the valve server. So that installation file will allow that in the future. So that's fine. We are doing a standalone vault installation. The so location is uh, and then saves location. <clears throat> if you have different folder, you want to save the saves, you, you can change it here. So then we need a license file.
operator CD. I don't need a remote control agent and this is not a distributed world internal communication platform so we're gonna skip that as well we don't want to do hardening so we can skip that Now it's time to enter master password. And administrator password. Okay, the installation has completed successfully. We didn't get an error message, but uh, we don't want to restart right now. We have one more component to install. That's the client. Administrator. Okay. Reboot the server now. Server has been rebooted. Let's um, check the services now. You can open this private ARC server console to take a look. So it looks like there's a warning message signature algorithm. SHA-1, so that recommendation is SHA-2, 256, that can be fixed, and you can see firewall is open for non-standard patches, probably that's because the RTP protocol has been opened, that's fine, um, we won't worry too much about those information, there's no error message there, um, we're gonna check Cyborg services. We can see Cyborg logic container is up. We can check the private arc service as well here. Database is up. Remote control agent. We didn't install it yet. We didn't enable it, so we didn't configure it as well. It's a fine private arc server is running. Okay, that's the most important part. So we can test our client. We log into a lab we defined before. So we can use the password we entered during the installation. So we log on, we should be able to see those three safes. Notification engine, system, mode internal. Before we say goodbye to see you in next video, I want to final check one more thing is uh, event notification engine. So now it shows running. Uh, the reason why we didn't see it running before is it started to delay. So it started later. Um, 
during the rebooting process. It's not like usual services start right away once you sit up. So you probably need to wait one or two minutes, then you will see this service gonna come up. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching. See you next video. Thank you.